is Leighton Bontero. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Um, we are doing a reading for what actions do you need to do to get this person to commit? Or I guess you could say from casual to serious, but really we're asking like, what, you know, what do you need to do? And I'm sure you're doing everything exactly as you should be, but let's say there was something you could work on. Um, this is going to be the reading for it. So I am going to just read through the crystal cards real quick. You're going to pick your favorite one and then we're going to jump into the reading. So we have Redocracy right here. Oh, actually, I'm going to zoom in on these. That's what I like to do. Okay. So we have Redocracy, Fluorite, Angel Aura Quartz, and Azurite. So four beautiful really beautiful cards. It would be hard to pick, but um, one of these is going to give you a vibe and this is going to be your reading. So take your time and jump to the timestamp below and enjoy your reading. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Leighton Bontero. Uh, first, I want to thank you for being here. If you're here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, it would mean a lot. So please do subscribe and we're going to get right into your reading. Um, you are here because you picked Redocracy and it's just a very beautiful pink coral color and that means this is your reading. Um, we are reading for what actions do you need to do to get this person to commit? Um, so I would say maybe you're like in a more casual relationship and you want it to be serious, you, you want a commitment. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, let's find out. We're, I'm really gonna try to stay focused on what you need to do, what actions. Um, so I, okay, yes, here we go. Okay, your energy right now, because I think we're gonna kind of do, like, um, we're gonna think of where you are and where you should be. And I just wanna put it out there, I'm sure you're wonderful and you're doing everything great. So this reading, we're gonna make it fun at the same time. It's not a reevaluation of how you need to change or do anything, you know, differently. Okay, but let's just say for fun, what can you do differently? <laughs> what actions do you need to take? Okay, this is you right now. Um, Okay, so this is the rock, this is endurance. So you are enduring. You are um, like, I almost wanna say relentless. You are patient, you're steady. Maybe too steady, maybe too patient, maybe too much of everything that is good and calm and tolerant about you. Um, but yes, the rock to me is like, it's a very, very strong, consistent force. And I think in a lot of ways, this is a great, stable, wonderful energy. Um, but if this is you now, and the question is what actions do you need to do to um, um, make this person commit, I'm going to take another one of these cards and we're going to say where you want to end up. And we're going to try to find the difference. Um, so if you're the rock here, I'm going to push this back. Okay, let's say that's you now. I want to ask where you kind of need to be to get this person to be, you know, your person, let's say. And so we've got the wind, and the wind is change. Um, the wind is also something, I don't think there's a single person in the world who actually likes the wind. Um, the wind is chaos. The wind is disruption. The wind is like... I, it causes migraines. I mean, I hate the wind. Um, everyone hates the wind. <laughs> but... I can see very clear and distinct differences between the rock and the wind. Um, and just taking this at like face value, maybe you need to be the one showing that you are switching things up. Maybe instead of waiting and enduring like a rock does, um, maybe you need to be the one that like comes in with your chaos and says like, it's my story. I'm shaking things up. This is what I want because the wind is an unapologetic force that brings all sorts of chaos. Whereas a rock is very much like, um, I don't know, just let's call it gentle and kind and patient. Um, and again, the rock is incredibly stable. Um, maybe too stable. Maybe you need to give this kind of like no Fox, here, I'm going to throw this at you. And if you hate it, who cares? Um, maybe that's the risk. And we're going to assume that if you do this, it's going to end in a commitment. That's the theme we're going to take. Um, so I want to get two cards around where you are now as this rock, um, how to bridge things and then where you need to go and what you kind of need to do. So we've got the fool. It doesn't mean you're a fool. It means you're actually fun. Um, so we've got the four of cups 
and the full right now for kind of this steadiness. So I'm going to say, as I get this rock energy off of you, I don't know you're terribly happy right now. And here's why. The Four of Cups is like, it's this very ho-hum, nothing too amazing is happening. It's You can call it apathetic or it's just this like, it's a, it, can, it can be contemplation, but it's almost more of a boredom. It, it's more of that... It's somewhere between being incredibly bored and quiet and uninspired and meditating. And I don't know where you are between meditating on this and being completely and utterly bored by it, but either way, it has that rock energy where you're just going to, you're basically sitting and waiting right now. And, um, yeah, so this is an energy of waiting, whereas the fool, which I like very much, this is a little more silly, a little more careless, a little more fun, flirtatious, all of that. I like the fool energy, but there is a contrast here. And I feel like, you know, this contrast to me, and I, I understand this, con this, this conundrum maybe that you're in right now. You're like all these different things. You're everything from like, I'm going to be here no matter what, as in this person can do nothing wrong, to... I'm just not really going to ruffle any feathers, but then I'm also going to be kind of fun and flirty and also be here for whatever wants to happen at any time. That's the energy I get here. Um, this is an energy that I think everyone can find themselves in if they like someone. And if you're in a casual relationship and you're the one that wants to take it further, I think this is a very easy place to wind up where you just roll with their punches. You just go with the flow because you're afraid if you push back, you might lose this person. And since they probably know you so well as being the rock that to be anything else would be kind of like extreme. Um, but you do have this, 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 fun kind of quirkiness that you threw at them or you show them other sides of yourself, but it's not enough. You do it when you think they want to receive it. You do it when you think they're in the mood for it. You know, you do it when you think like, oh yeah, just basically when it suits their mood, their day, their energy, their whatever. Um, and this fun flirty energy can be so many things. This could be like showing up at their, at their house with, you know, their favorite bottle of wine. It can be cooking them their favorite dinner. It could be wearing their favorite outfit, perfume, whatever. But I feel like it's this, you know, or it could be like, hey, like a last minute, like let's do a road trip or something fun, weekend trip. But it's still like always going to be something that you think pulls them in more, if that makes sense. Um, so I do see you right now as your study, you're staying the course, but I don't know that I get this authentic authenticity to yourself in here. So and not to talk so much about you right now, but if we talk about what actions you need to take and we look down and we see the wind, you need to be this like just almost tumultuous, no fucks, careless, um, um, what's the word when you don't, selfish kind of energy. And let's get a little bit about what we would like to see you be in this wind energy that, you know, apparently is going to... Um, make them want to commit. Okay. So here we have really, okay. I like this. Okay. Because to me, this makes sense. We have the high priestess and we have the three of pentacles. So for the high priestess, this is mystery. This is intrigue. This is like, I do what I want. I'm the moon. I'm water. I'm mystery. I'm wisdom. I'm everything female. I'm, you know, like a bag of ovaries. Like I am just like, so totally, utterly this strong, powerful, capable female, and it can be female energy. If you are a guy watching this, this is just that, that passionate energy that a female gives off. And, but it also with that, it is that very also in a nice contrast, the female energy is the yin energy. So it doesn't, it's, um, it's not aggressive, it's passive. So it's still, it's still a little passive. It's not that like, you know, it's not the energy of like the um, emperor or someone who's just in your face, right? But it is it is still very strong and very confident and very all-knowing as opposed to the apathetic kind of ho-hum four of cups energy. This is a much more intense energy. Now, I will say these are both water, which I like. So these are still, you still need that emotion. You still need to like temper that 
that person with your, your fun range of emotions, but you have to really do it in a way that's like very honorable to you. Um, and I don't think you're doing that up here. Um, and with the wind, I mean, anyone can be the wind. It is fun to be the wind. We're the wind with our closest friends. We're the wind with our parents. Usually like we're the wind with anyone that we really love and trust. We can be the wind because we can be chaotic. We don't have to apologize or walk on ice or whatever that saying is. Um, so it's just not, it's been, it's, it's been a little more careless and a little less cautious. And the three of pentacles, there is a bit of teamwork here. This is people working together. There's this, um, feeling of like, maybe it's this, like, I don't know, including someone else. So maybe there's this sense of like inviting this person out more or, I don't know, but I get this sense of like this third, I don't want to say a third party as in like you need to rope someone into your, your dynamic. That's not really it. But there's this, to me, there's a sense of like working, um, like planning together. And maybe this is you just clearly expressing what you want, what you want to build, where you want to see this going. I can see this as like kind of creating those beginning like cornerstones to, to your relationship or your foundation. Um, and maybe you're just starting to lay those. Cause this also can be like the very beginning building the building blocks and um but with this is it does call for teamwork that's why there's you know three let's say in the ants um so maybe you start in all this like fun sexy chaos that you're going to start creating you do start just being like this is what i want this is what i need this is where i see myself and i just i i feel like there just needs to be more of a voice from you and more just more deliberate action and i don't even need to talk about that these two contrasts anymore because if you're watching this you get it you absolutely get it um so let's get a little bit um i'm going to put a card in between and see like how we're going to bridge this gap and so we have the seven of cups and interestingly enough the seven of cups is a like um it, i don't know there's different ways of looking at this card but to me it can be a card of like Oh, like, um, things looking, <laughs> give me a card of like, things aren't as they seem, things are too good to be true. Um, it can be a card of like dreams and fantasies. And I can actually see this playing a little bit more into like a dream and fantasy scape. Um, so if this is how you're going to bridge the gap between these, I do think you need to kind of dream big. I think you need to focus a little bit more on exactly what you want and almost in a way where it's like, okay, maybe it does seem too good to be true. Maybe you know that this is someone you really, really want to be with, someone you want to live with, someone you want to, I don't know, have kids with, whatever the extreme is. If you know that, then maybe it's your turn to like put that out there somehow. Um, and like the wind, maybe you just throw it out one night. Maybe you pretend you've had more to drink than you had and you just say something like, wouldn't that be fun if we just had five kids together? And then you'd be like, oh, I'm so buzzed. But maybe you're not. And maybe then you start talking about having like one kid in a year or whatever. Um, I don't have any kids. You can probably tell by my example just now. But um, my point is I really think this is a very – intentional way of you like this is like throwing something at a wall to see if it sticks and I just think that's what you need to do I think you need to create more chaos I think you need to stop being so accommodating and so um you need more of a voice and I it's a weird thing to get but I just with this I get that that feeling that you're not quite where you want to be you're just laying in wait and the fool it is this this adventurous kind of silly energy, but I just don't even think it's necessarily true to who you are. I feel like there's a lot more depth to you and whoever this person is, they need to see that. And they will see it if they actually commit to you because they're going to see all the things that are you. But, um, right now they really, they really need to see more of you. And I don't know that they're going to pull it out of you. I think you might have to pull it out of them. So, um, let me actually, let me get some chakra cards. I want to know your chakra, where you're at, and I want to know um, where you need to be. So let's see, like, I want to ask, what are the chakras that you, like, have now and embody, and they're solid, and kind of like your strengths? So we've got success, and we've got passion. And I like, um, let me 
I like, these are great chakras to have. Um, we kind of work our way up the wearing bow starting at the base. So we've got like passion sort of in your root you're grounded, you know yourself. I think you aren't afraid to express yourself like physically, passionately. And this can be physical or it can be with words. It can be through art, but I think you're pretty tapped into that. And with this person, I would say that you probably are physical with them. You guys know what each other likes, you know, you just know how to like get to each other in a good, good, exciting way. So I think that's great. Um, and then success, and this is different. This is you, this is your whole deal. And I feel like this is like more working its way up to kind of your gut, your stomach. I think you're good. I think you're feeling secure and sound. I don't think like you're plagued by, you know, uneasy, queasy feelings of like where your life's going. I think actually in general, you're probably doing pretty good in other aspects of your life because if you weren't, this would show up as something you, you would need to work on. Um, but, and it's not to say it won't show up down here and then we'll have another way of analyzing it or, or explaining it, but I think you're good here. So let's see what you kind of need to work on to get to this wind, chaotic wind energy. Um, so we want you, okay, interesting. So we've got stop with also red, um, probably maybe a little bit more intense red. It's hard to see under this light. And then we've got creativity. So, um, Okay, to become the wind, this to me tells me you do need to be more assertive. And the key here, I don't know if you can see it, is stop. So I don't think stop is like, I don't think you need to stop your operation or shut down your whole shop. I think you need to, um, like, there's something within a, a, I don't know, there's something within like your, let's say, root chakra, your passion, your or your groundedness, not so much your, like, oh my God, I don't know. I, I don't know, but there's this something you need to stop that you're doing. And it's not something like you don't need to stop how you're thinking necessarily. Cause that to me would be like higher up the chain. It's more of like, you need to stop something you're doing. And I do think that it has something to do around passion. So this could be cutting off physical, um, connections. And I will say that that's probably how I'm going to read it for this. And I'm going to see that pretty strongly. Um, I do think you need to stop. I, I hear myself saying this and anyone who's watching this is probably like, that is not the message I wanted, but I do think you need to stop being physical, um, with this person. And if you really do want that commitment and you want to come in in this totally different space and energy, then yeah, you, um, I, yeah, we could talk about this forever, but it's going to be the same message. It's not going to get less fun or more interesting, but, um, yes, it's a very clear message because right now, let's say you've got that, you've got that piece and this person knows you guys click, right? They know that you go together pretty well, but if you pull that out of the equation, you create some chaos, you tell them exactly what you want, you get them all hot and bothered in another way, um, this might work for you. And then you also show them that you're like moving and shaking, you're doing things, you're obviously successful, you're working hard, things are going well for you in your life. Another part that we want you to work on, so this is creativity. Um, and then when I see purple, I think, uh, I don't know, this to me is somewhere like around the throat, third eye chakra. Um, so to me, this is expression, this creative expression, this could be with words. Um, and as I say that I am going to say, you probably need to get creative with different conversations. You need to start finding ways that you can broach different topics with this person. And you are going to have to get creative because if you've like, you know, kibbutz the physical, um, then yeah, you're going to have to start finding other ways to have fun with this person and connect. And honestly, I don't know, maybe that's just, I, I couldn't tell you there. I think if you talk about things, you might find new avenues, um, that yeah, that you weren't on before. And so this reading I actually very much like this topic. And I can imagine if I were getting this reading, I'd, I, this could totally be my reading for a hundred different relationships I've been in there where I wanted someone to commit. So I get this reading and I hope you do too. And, you know, I don't have a timeline of how long this could take, but this could take 
a week. I mean, who knows? It could take a month. I don't know. But like something tells me this is a pretty good formula to follow if you want this person to commit. And, you know, I think at the very least, it would be a pretty good test of um, what happens if. What happens if you, A, cut off the physical, start telling them everything you want, or I don't know if this is the order, but maybe start expressing what you want, like really letting them know, and then just having more of that like no facts chaos about you, like really no fear, no insecurities. Um, and then, yeah, the physical ends, you kind of become this just wonderfully mysterious person who doesn't wait around for anyone. And you start forcing like different issues and ways of like communicating and enjoying each other and seeing where that gets you. Um, so yeah, I would love to know if this worked for anyone who's watching this. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, please subscribe, like, comment, whatever. But right now I'm desperate for, subscrip for subscribers. Um, but yes, I hope you like this and I would love to hear about it. And thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. Leighton Bontero, thank you so much for being here and for letting me read for you. Um, we're doing a really, really fun topic. And um, this is fluorite. I love this. I can't find anything that looks like this in person, but it is a real picture and it's beautiful. So this is your reading, and we are doing a reading for, it's quite specific, but it's um, what actions do you need to do to get this person to commit? Like what, what, like you're, oh my God, you're going from, let's say casual to serious, or you want to go from casual to serious. So what do you need to do? Um, and I will just say, I'm sure you're wonderful and you're doing everything right. Um, so whatever you do is the right thing to do. Let's just put it that way. But um, we'll have fun with this reading. So... Okay, I am going to, I want to know the energy you're at right now or who you are in this relationship. And let's just say, for the sake of this reading, that that's not really serving you. And we want to find out kind of who you want to transition into to make this work. So, um, okay, you are right now, your joy, music, which seems like a lovely thing to be, and I'm sure it is, but in the interest of getting this person to commit to you, you need to be dark matter. And it is funny, the theme that the themes that kind of play out. Um, so I'm just going to say right now, just looking at these two cards, music is, it's joy, it's happiness, it's elation, it's, it's something you do when you're happy and you're inspired. And then dark matter is just dark matter. We can, whatever, we'll talk about that. But if you're happy enjoying music right now, generally I would think this is an amazing thing because why isn't it, right? But if things aren't good for you, and you want this person to commit and you're not where you want to be with them, then it tells me that this isn't a sincere place to be. This isn't actually, you're not actually joying music. You're really then putting up a facade of being joying music. Um, I don't know what you actually are. That wasn't the, or no, yeah, you, <laughs> if you're not joying music, I don't know what you are, but what I'm saying you are in this relationship is pretending to be joy in music. Um, and I will tell you, this is a very exhausting, hard thing to do. And it is a lot more, once someone realizes you're doing this, I actually think it's like the kiss of death. Um, so let's get there. And dark matter is almost like the opposite contrast. It is something that is, it's dark. It's not bad. We all have dark matter in us. We all have light matter and we all have dark matter, right? Like I don't understand any of this, but like I think of black holes that pull things in and they attract. So there is this darker energy that plays out, but it's still like this magnetic force, but it's, this tells me that you need to be more, more true to yourself, more real. And it tells me like, if you were more real, you would step away from being this like very happy, overly elated, life is great person when you're with this person. And you would turn a little bit more into like, maybe it's cynical, maybe it's sarcastic, maybe it is dark, maybe it's someone who shares with their partner that like, you know, I cried about you last night and it fucking sucked and I drank a bottle of wine two nights ago and I just, I really like, you're making me feel like shit. Like maybe that's the vibe you need to give off over the, um, oh my gosh, like, I'm just so happy to see you. And every time I'm with you, I'm so happy. Like, I just feel like these are two big contrasts. So 
And again, just because your person isn't committing doesn't mean they're a pile of shit or that they're a horrible person. But it does tell me if you're here and this is the topic, they're not doing enough for you because you're obviously trying to change something about what you're doing to make them commit. I'm not saying that's a recipe for disaster. This this absolutely could work. But um, you need to stop pretending that everything's great with them and you need to start being a lot more real and it tells me that your real is um in regards to this person right now is pretty heavy and i don't know but it but because we're asking spirit she's saying it's actually going to work it just it's not going to turn this person off for you to be a little darker a little heavier a little more real um anyway and like yeah just a little more gritty a little more edgy um Okay, so I'm going to get two cards about your energy now, and then we're going to get two about how to do this. So what, um, yeah, let, I want to know a little bit about like how we need you to work on changing. So where are you right now? What do we, what do we need to know about you? Okay, so nine of pentacles and nine of swords. Interesting. Nines are, uh, it's not a bad number. Nines aren't bad. They are kind of like fruition. They are, when I think of nines, I think of, you're not quite at the pinnacle of, of each um, suit, but you are, or each element, but you're, you're, you're getting there and it's a good thing. Um, Nine of Pentacles is independent wealth. So this is like, this is you really in your own world, you might be kind of blissfully happy. Um, you might have everything clicking. And this was exactly the theme in the last reading, which is very funny. There was this card to the left of this card to say like, Hey, your things are going really good for you personally with your friends, with your work, with your career, with your health, whatever. But um, yes, when I see nine of pentacles, I think things are clicking for you. I think you're probably doing very well at work. I think you've got the things you want. I think that it makes me think your health is good. You're happy with your home life. Like things are just good. Um, nine of swords though is a little more intense and actually not not a very nice card. Um, this is anxiety. This is nightmare, as you can tell. The difference in just the pictures alone even with this glare you can still see like a beautiful pink, pink flamingo and then you can see like you know daggers coming out of a skull so i would say that right now you are someone who things are going great for and then you've got some serious anxiety and i am going to say that this anxiety probably has to do with your relationship and to think that if it does have to do with your relationship and you're putting on this front of being like someone who isn't anxious or isn't unhappy, that's really, um, it's like toxic to yourself, basically. Like you are being very like, like schizophrenic with yourself. Okay. Which is not, I probably sounded stupid saying that, but like, cause that's not a thing, but if you know what I mean, like you're, you're just not being true to yourself. Okay. It's, it's that simple. Um, so you have to kind of pick a lane or pick a, a way of being. And if you pick this lane where you're like, life is great, I really am enjoying music, then I would say you'd probably have to cut this person out of your life because right now you can't have it both ways. Right now. But we're here for this reading of what it's going to take to get this person to commit. And I think if you lean into this very honest, very truthful place, um, and you show a little grit, I think you're going to find that this person receives it very well. Let's get two cards about how to do this and what you need to like lean into. Um, okay, so we've got the Six of Cups and the Seven of Swords. Um, sorry, let me think about this for just a second. So the Six of Cups, this is funny. I always think of this as like a simple pleasures card. I think of it as like, finding enjoyment and pleasure in things that are just very basic, but in a, like in a, in a nice way, I've given the example of like, for me, it would be like a cup of coffee in the morning or I don't know, looking out my window and having it be bright and sunny out, like little things that make you happy. Um, and then the seven of swords is, um, gosh, what is the seven of swords? <laughs> this is kind of like, uh, it's not really transition. Oh man, it's like making a break for it. The seven of swords is like your, your, you know exactly what you want with the seven of swords, right? Like 
even if you have to hurt a couple people or hurt a feeling or two along the way, I won't say a couple of people, I'll say a couple of feelings along the way, that's okay because you know exactly what you need to do. This is like your mind, you have your eye on the prize, your mind is focused and you will, you will, you'll take some losses or you'll take some prisoners if you have to. Um, that's what I get out of the seven of swords. So for this dark matter, we know that you need to stop basically being phony and happy all the time with this person. You need to let them know exactly what you're thinking. You can show a darker side, bring them in because if they can't handle it, then you have to think if it's someone you want to be in a commitment with anyway. Um, but let's just say you do that. And then I think along with this, there, these two messages are pretty clear, although I'm not sure I completely understand them in the context. But this is saying that like you would have to just enjoy simple things with this person. And maybe this is like, maybe with this person, it's very one dimensional. Maybe you always do the same thing. Maybe you, cause if they're not, if you guys aren't committed, you're probably hooking up a lot or you're like in a rut of maybe, maybe you always eat dinner and drink and hook up. Maybe you always watch Netflix and drink and hook up. Maybe you always meet each other after work, eat dinner and hook up. Like, I don't know, but something would tell me that there's like, um, there's like a pattern and I have a feeling that this pattern is, it probably involves alcohol. It probably involves, um, maybe it involves them like spending money on you. Um, maybe it involves you like putting a lot of effort into your appearance. Like, I don't know, but there's something, I guess this is, this is a card to say there is a, you need to enjoy simpler aspects of each other, like very pared down, very simple. This isn't a card of like sexiness or deep intrigue. It's just simple. So it could be like cooking a meal together or taking a walk together or reading a book together or reading to each other. I don't know, like whatever your jam is, there's something you're not doing with this person. There's probably a lot of things, quite frankly, that you're not doing with this person. But this is a message that not only do you need to show them that you aren't this like pixie dust fairy, you also don't need the complexities that you have right now. Things can be a lot more simple. Um, and and I also get with this because like with the unicorn and with this and with kids, I'm also going to say more G-rated, right? Like maybe there's a message here that you don't put so much emphasis on the physical or the hooking up and you start having fun doing things that are more PG at the most rated, but yeah, this is a very G rated energy. Um, and the seven of swords, we've kind of talked about that too. You are taking no prisoners. You're doing what serves you. You know what you want. You have an agenda. You have this, this, this point, you know what you need and you will take it. Um, it's kind of like this thief in the night card. If I think of like the Rider weight, um, deck, but there's something very like intentional and unapologetic about this card. And, you know, we see it under the swords. Like I, I like that you, um, you're going to go from an anxiety of like overthinking things to doing exactly what you want and need. So you're done with the, like, wish I did, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Now you're just going to be all action. And you know, if it, if it hurts your special friend a little bit, that's okay. Because, um, really we're not, it's, it's, it's really about you. You are already willing to change something about yourself to make them commit or, you know, in hopes that they will commit. And that's fine because I think change is very good. And, um, it might be, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but, um, yeah, where am I going with this? But, but you're doing enough. So now you need to really make sure that this is everything you want and that it serves you. I'm going to do a card to kind of bridge your, the gap here and see like what you need to keep in mind or just a little guidance from spirit to get from here to here. And we have the eight of cups and the eight of cups is an, it's an interesting card. Um, it's, it's moving on, right? It's, it's just kind of walking away. And with the bear, it almost looks like it's in a clumsy way. Like it's not sneaking away in the night. Um, to me, this is an energy of like, you know, going into this, as you make this transition, as you kind of figure out exactly what you want, as you kind of restructure your thoughts, your actions, your feelings, 
I do think this is, there's a part of you that's going to have to say like, I can walk away from this. I don't need to ghost. I don't need to cut communications. I can, I can move on if I have to. And I'm not saying you should, or you will, or it will be easy or anything like that. It may never even come to that, but I think this is like an energy you really, it's like letting go of that fear of what if I lose them? What if they don't want to commit? You can move on and you will. And there's just something a little bit kind of clumsy about this. And the bear, I feel like bears don't get their feelings hurt. Like they're just, I don't know, like they'll sleep it off. They'll eat it off. They'll just like fish in the river. They'll do whatever they want to do that makes bears happy, but they're not tripping off this. Um, and I just think that's kind of the vibe you have to take with you as you drop some of this happy over the top vivacious energy, um, and you know, take things a little darker. So, okay. I've been having fun with these chakra cards. I want to know your chakra, like your energy right now that you're embodying, Um, And then we're going to go into like what you need to focus on. So I want to know like what you've been doing up here and we'll say like, maybe that's good, but really what you want to do is get down here. So this is where you're at that you're doing well on. Um, So we've got growth and surrender. So growth, this is actually, this is good. This is the heart chakra because it's green and growth with the heart tells me like you are you are pushing yourself. You are, um, I think you're opening your heart up. I think you're probably already working leaps and bounds more with this person than maybe you have with anyone in a while. Like this is a very, very positive card. And to see it next to knowing, to see it next to a card showing that things are going well in your life in a lot of ways, like you seem stable, grounded, successful. I like seeing the growth chakra card. So there's nothing wrong with this. And you know, there's nothing wrong with anything you're doing. Like there's nothing wrong with playing up that you're happier with someone than you might be. That's what everyone does up until some point or most people do. Most relationships, I think, start off that way, especially if there's like an um, imbalance. Um, someone's always like, oh yeah, I'll I'll do that. I'll I'll hang out with you and your friends tonight when you really just want to hang out with them or like, yeah, no, that's okay if we don't hang out this weekend. That's fine. I've got a ton to do anyway. I'm super busy. Like, that's okay. I can't wait to see you on Monday. Like, we all do that, but you are going to get a little more, like, um, authentic. Um, Okay, and then surrender. And this, I like this too. This, to me, there's nothing up here where I'm like, ooh, you need to take that back. Um, Surrender is, we're getting up more towards, I think, here with, like, the third eye or the um, crown chakra. So this is more, like, getting into... um, like spiritual, um, maybe even, um, why wouldn't I do these readings? I can never get the right word. We're like psychic energy, like metaphysical energy. Um, yeah, just getting those more connected to spirit. So I like this and with surrender for me, I feel like you're finally quieting your mind. I think you're getting to a place where you are, and this is just like a you thing. This has nothing to do with your relationship or this person. I think you're getting to a place where you're quieting your mind quite a bit. And you're thinking more about like um, uh, bigger things, bigger concepts. Um, And maybe it starts with meditation. Maybe it starts with tarot and it can turn into like, you know, other asks like, like similar to religion or maybe getting more into religion or more into spirit, whatever. But I definitely see this like higher level chakra that you're starting to really develop and grow. And with your heart, I like this. So very good. I have no spirit has no constructive criticism for you there. Um, let's go down to two more chakras that I think you might want to, um, work on if you're going to like really embody this, 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 how to get them back energy, um, or action. Okay. Interesting. So very similar color consciousness. And then we've got happiness. So, (laughs) okay. So to me, there's a lot here that makes sense. And I really love when this happens because, okay, so you do need to work on the genuine happiness with this person. I'm not going to say that this has to do with like your, your life or your life path or anything. And this is just about this person and this relationship. We do want to work on the happiness. Um, when I think of red where it's going to start more at your base, so it's going to be more like your root chakra. And this is like your, your, like your, your base, your, I don't want to say your core, but like your most basic need, let's say, um, 
it would be to be happy in this relationship. And you really, really want to get there. You really actually want to be genuinely happy instead of posing and acting like you're happy. You really want to get there. And I think you can and will, but this person also wants to feel that genuine happiness from you. And that genuine happiness from you is going to come with them you know, hopefully wanting more and wanting to be more serious and wanting a commitment that would obviously make you genuinely happy. But I feel like there's going to have to be more that you show before that happens. And I just, I don't know, I feel like this can come with different forms of expression, different forms of the communication. But um, yeah, this came up for a reason. And then over here, we have the consciousness. Again, higher level chakra, like I, I just say third eye, and I'm not very well read on chakras at all. Um, I would love to know more about them. So, uh, you know, this, I'm not talking about this in a very skilled way, but I will say that this is like, um, your, your, um, crown third eye. So again, we're getting to that like more spiritual energy and this is consciousness. And I think this is just being more awake and more present for yourself. I really think this is developing you like just figuring out what you want and what you need. This really is about you. And that's the thing. So what we're taking away from this, as I wrap this up, this person, you know, according to this layout is going to want to commit to you if you just are more authentic to you. Okay. And that's, that's what I get. Whatever it takes to make you happy from this person, express it, go after it. Don't be afraid to lose them. Um, don't be afraid to lose them. Don't be afraid to walk away. Don't be afraid of that. Um, and I think that's a big part of it. I think the six of cups tells me like there's going to be less action, more talking, more simple, more fun, more childish fun. Um, and then the seven of swords is doing exactly really putting your mind really knowing what you want and going after it. Like a kid is like so focused on a target, like they want something, you know, they want, I don't know why I thought of a balloon, like they want a balloon and then, you know, they're not going to stop until they get that balloon or whatever. It's kind of like that energy. Um, and it is, I've said it in the last reading, but it is that no fucks, non-apologetic, very much you doing you and doing it like you're, you're conscious. You're not, you're not playing a game. This isn't you like, you know, this isn't a game. This really is you like figuring out exactly what you want, going through your own checklist of what it takes to make you happy and, and doing it and serving you. Um, so yeah, that, I hope this helps. I hope this is enough of an action plan. Um, yeah. So anyway, I am going to stop this here and I just want to thank you. I'm going to ask you to subscribe because that would mean everything, comment, like, whatever, but I'm dying for those subscriptions. So thank you more than anything for watching. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Bontero, thank you so much for being here and for listening. We are doing an, a really fun reading and topic, but um, first I'm going to tell you Angel Aura Quartz, absolutely, I think my prettiest card, my favorite card in the whole deck. Um, so beautiful. It's like, it always just reminds me of something like Barbie or something even though I didn't care about Barbie, but, um, okay. So this reading is really good. It is, um, what actions can you do? Do you need to do to get this person to commit? So it's like taking it from casual to serious. And I've had the, the readings before this. I don't always say this or maybe I do. They were really good. Um, so yes. Okay. Here we are. We are going to find out the energy that you're like, um, kind of embracing in this relationship and what you need to move into since the theme is what you need to do what and it's kind of going to be like what you need to change a little bit um and this is fun I think I just want to say up front I'm sure you're doing everything great I'm sure you're a lovely person and many people would love to commit to you so I just want to say that I think you're lovely whoever you are and we're going to get into you know how you need to change okay so um, this is you in the relationship right now, the equator, and this is what you need to be to make things happen. Okay, so already this has a much more um, lively vibe than the other two. So, okay, uh, to make equal is the equator. This is, this is the energy you're taking on. Wildness, electricity is where you need to go. So... 
with the equator and 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 to make equal what i got from this is that right now you're always willing to i think accommodate you're always willing to kind of like let the status quo ride you're not pushing limits you're not pushing boundaries you're not trying to ruffle feathers you're not really you're not really doing much of anything. And I, I really think of this like the equator is like, it's that middle point, right? It's the complete midsection. It's, um, I, I'm not going to say nothing happens at the equator because the equator is this like, I feel like it's filled with magical rainforest. So it's still a very nice place to be. Um, but I will say this, like it can feel very stagnant. And I do think that right now you're just letting things be stagnant. You're letting things sit in this very, maybe it's easy, maybe it's not, but it's just, it's like a flat line. You're, you're, you're allowing your relationship to just kind of flat line. Um, and maybe this isn't really a relationship yet. Maybe this is someone that you're just starting to hook up with. Maybe it's someone you've known for a while, whatever it is, um, not a whole lot is happening. And so from here, you know, you can go anywhere, but right now things are very, very baseline. And I think the problem with this is that you're kind of okay with it. You're just, you're not pushing, you're not taking, you're not putting on any pressure. You're not really doing anything. Um, and this tells me in this reading so far that if you actually did something, you might get something. And I, I guess what I'm getting out of this is like, there's that whole thing, you know, you can't get something if you don't ask for it. And I think this is the message I'm getting right now. You need to like, you need to start igniting the fires. You need to start, I mean, electricity, it's wildness, it's change, it's, it's chaos, it's, it's, it's electric. I mean, it's everything, right? It's heat, it's, energy you need to crank it up you need to be like okay let's just let's set this to fire let's let's watch this thing burn whatever it is like maybe you need to let the relationship crash and burn and maybe you need to set it alight in a good way but there is definitely something that needs to happen and that something tells me it has to come from you you need to get off of the just the line you've been walking with this person to um, something that is very, very different, very electric, very alive. And that doesn't mean that you guys need to like go out dancing or take a trip around the world. I don't mean that kind of electricity. And I also don't mean passion or physical. I mean like, uh, like a fucking thunderbolt of change. Like you need to throw shit at this person. You need to start creating chaos. Um, and that's, and the words here, and I like the words that go with these cards a lot. I love these cards, um, is, is wildness. So I do think that it's like things need to get really, really roused, roused, razzled, shook up, whatever you want to say. Um, so yeah, I'm going to now do some tarot around this and we're going to help understand where you're at and then how to get you there. And these, you know, stick with me because these last two readings were really strong. So, um, okay. I'm going to get a little bit of where you're at and we're going to help use this as to like how you can change. Um, so strength, it looks like you're implanting strength, which is great. And the three of pentacles. So I will say that right now, and strength is a card of like, I always wonder like, you know, are you the person controlling the lion or are you the lion being controlled? Um, I'm going to say, I don't know with you right now. Uh, let me think about this for a minute. The three of pentacles. Let me just think about this for a minute. I think, okay. I think you are showing strength right now, but it's not, I don't think it's in the right way. Okay. Like, I think you're so showing strength in that, like, I don't know. I don't know. I need to think about this. And I rarely get st like hung up because these cards are so different. And I, I really like, I'm just going to reiterate so I can like get my, my head here with the equator. Um, okay. In this, in this relationship you're in right now, I think you want, obviously you want things to happen. Um, I think you want a home with this person because when I see the pentacles, I think of foundations, I think of home, I think of stability. Okay. And I, 
I think you've probably tried a little bit to express this. I really do. I think you've laid ever so slightly the groundwork or you've dropped, let's say, subtle hints. There's something to tell me in your own way you have communicated this. Um, but I think it's been a little more passive than it needs to be. Um, I don't think it's been enough where your message has been like incredibly received. I just, I don't see that you have done enough. And with the strength card to this point, I think you've been so strong for yourself, like in your, like this is you basically saying, I don't have to force the issue. I'm going to be strong. I can endure this. I can wait this out. But it's like you're, although you're being strong for yourself and you're showing up for yourself in a strong way, you're also doing yourself a bit of a disservice because you're being so, you're just patting yourself so well that nothing really is getting done. And I really think you want things to get done. I really think you want to see some movement, some action. Like this tells me, yes, you do want something out of this, but you've just been so focused on being this like strong kind of stoic being in this relationship that nothing's getting done. And as a result of this, nothing has gotten done. And that's, I guess this isn't, you know, it's not crazy deep, but I just, that's what I see that I don't know. And it's, it almost makes me think like maybe there was like small progress made at one point. Maybe someone said something that seemed like it was going somewhere and then just nothing happened. And I, I, I really, you really need things to happen. And instead of telling yourself like, you're strong, you can do this, you're fine. You know, you'll wait it out. You'll, whatever it is. Like, I just think there needs to be a little bit more. And with that, we do, we have the, we have the electricity and the wildness that you need to bring into this relationship. Like this is what spirit is saying you need to do. So now we're going to get tarot for how you're going to do this. Um, and what you need to do. So we've got basically the page of wands. They're calling it the innocence of wands and the two of pentacles. Um, so the two of pentacles is balance and the, the page of wands, I just lost my shoe, um, is like, uh, it can be new jobs, but I don't necessarily see it as a new job. This is more of a love, but I see this as maybe like a new approach, a new, just a new mindset, a new action, a new something that is going to, um, kind of light that flame, like kindle this spark, like something different. And I'm going to say a new approach. And when I think of wands, I do think of action, their, their, their movement, their fire, their passion, their action. And this electricity, this wildness that you're going to bring, I do. And by wild, it doesn't mean wild. Like, like I said, it's not this wild, like you're going to, you know, run through the streets naked. It's wild. Like you're going to like step out of your comfort zone. That's, that's, I think the equivalent, that's where this wildness is, this, this feeling in you, that's going to feel so wild and crazy. Like you need to push yourself to do that. Um, and you probably need to get a little bit creative about how you're going to do this. Um, yeah. And I also think like, so the pentacles, this is balance, right? And I think something you need to keep in mind and approach with this person is a sense of balance. And I'm really trying to think like how I want to explain this, like how do I even get this? But I think like right now things are at, there, there isn't a balance, let's say. Like maybe, I don't know what, I can't think of an exa example of what and something being out of balance would be, but like it could be someone always goes over to one person's house instead of the other. It could be like maybe something always happens on one person's time frame and not the other. Um, maybe someone always drives further to see someone else. Like I just, those are a little more like surface level, but I think as you move towards like this intentional kind of chaotic energy that you want to insert, I do think you need to think, I do think you need to think about what, um, what balance you want to strike there. What, what do you really want? And is it in balance? So I guess like, I, okay. So as I, when I talk about things, I get these kinds of like little external ways to embellish on them. Um, so for this, like, okay, let's say this is, let's say this is a fuck buddy right now. And it doesn't matter if you've known each other for a while or not very long. Let's say it's someone you're just hooking up with. And then let's say you really want them to commit and you really want to be with them. You have to find what that, what, what does that mean? Like, are you going to go from what you're doing now to like 
traveling the world together or are you going to go from what you're doing now to like you know, baby steps of like, okay, then we hang out this many times and now we're committed. Or what does commitment mean? I just, that's what I get with this balance card. And I would say that right now things are probably very much out of balance. Um, so this is saying like, be very intentional about bringing that sense of balance, um, into your dynamic. But I really, I think you're going to naturally feel more balanced once you are able to express yourself. And once you, really, like I said, I just get this feeling like you need to inject this energy into the relationship. And this energy is kind of this, like, um, this motivating factor for this person to like shit and get off the, shit and get off the pot or whatever, like for them to do something like you need to just like light a fire under them and be like, do something. Talk to me. Tell me what you want. Tell me what you don't want. Cut, cut all ties with me ask me to move in. Like, what is it? Like, where is this going? But there has to be something, um, but it has to be, you know, you have to find a balance, which is just very cliche. I realized that I didn't do a great job of explaining that, but, um, I do see where this needs to go. And okay, we're going to do like a connector card. What's something you can take with you for like bridging this gap here? How do you do this? And we have the two of cups and this is this actually is very like hopeful and sweet because this is a card of connection, of love, of like two people coming together. These are hearts connecting. This is a really, really positive card. Um, so to see like, to see this card for how you need to bridge the gap, maybe, maybe you do need to like everything from turn up the sweetness to turn up the very intentional, I want this. I really like you. I love you. I want to be with you. I want to be in a committed relationship. I want a commitment, whatever. I think it's saying something or communicating like your, your wants that have to do with love and romance. And I'm, and just that is going to inject energy. That's going to create a reaction in this person. And whatever that reaction is, you can work with it. It's going to make them, okay, they can push you away after this. They can not talk to you anymore. That's kind of an answer, right? Or they can be like, oh my God, yeah, let's talk. I mean, I don't know what a guy would say if they were into hearing this. They'd still probably freak out for a certain amount of time and then, you know, they'd come around. But my point is you're going to know uh, pretty quickly if you start doing a 180 and like, shaking things up, how this person responds, how they feel about it. Um, so yeah, that to me is, is pretty clear. And so now I'm, I've been doing these chakra cards and I'm going to get an idea of your chakra, um, now, like where you're at. And then we're going to find out like what energy you kind of want to take on to create this, this exciting change. And I don't know this balance thing, like this juggling act, it's still, it's bothering me because I don't think I've done an incredibly good job of explaining it. And it's, there's, there's more to it, but I, I, I don't have the words for it. Um, okay. Let's see. So right now you're at faith and movement. And so I'm going to say the green is your heart and like purple blue. This is like your throat chakra and it can go up to like your third eye or your crown. But when I think of like, um, blue and purple, um, I do think more of like the third eye and with faith and with movement with the heart, I think these are good things that you're doing. I think you are getting a lot more connected to whatever it is that moves you, right? Whatever, whether it's spiritual, whether it's religious, whether it's like some part of like this metaphysical realm, whether it's the fact that you're watching a tarot video right now that is guided by spirit, like they, these are real things and they really do help connect you and make you stronger and your heart here with movement this tells me like you're you're this is really good like you're pushing yourself you maybe you've been through a lot and maybe it's been hard for you to open your heart maybe it's been like an interesting journey for you even to get where you are and you've kind of pushed yourself like in this emotional heart kind of feeling way. And you are, you're, you're like pushing, you're like putting pressure on your heart to just feel more, accept more, love more, take more in. And I think this is really good. And you know, quite frankly, this all is why you're probably at this 
weird, and I say status quo kind of space because you are, you're working on your own strength. You're working on keeping things just balanced. You're just working on maintaining some kind of balance with yourself, with your heart, with your emotions, with your faith. Like, sure, you want things to go somewhere. You want to build, you want to start things, but like, it just hasn't really been the right time. And I think now, as I kind of get into this bigger picture, you are ready to shake things up. You're ready to like inject that electricity to get things a little bit more, to put a little more umph into this. And I think it's really taken you, it's taken these kind of like opening these chakras um, and working on them probably subconsciously to just get to the point where you're like, shit, I'm ready for more. And with that, I do think now I see this, this is a warning from spirit. You want to take this, I almost want to say you want to take this slowly. You want to keep, you want to keep things in perspective. You don't want to like just throw caution to the wind and jump all in, but you do want to start by expressing yourself and letting this person know how you feel and having a much more like fuck it kind of vibe. Um, you don't need to stay at like the mid range anymore. You don't want to be there anymore. You're too strong. You're too ready. Um, yeah. And anyway, so the page of wands to me is, it's just this creative little firecracker that's going to do whatever they want. And, um, I think that's something you need to take on, but we want to get into the chakras that you need to work on to make this happen. So what do we need you to work on? And we've got death and interesting surrender. Okay. So the death, which I really like that this came up. Okay. This, I think, is your fear of loss, of losing someone, of letting go. And this is heavy, right? Because this is like, if you haven't pushed this person for a commitment, and now the action you're going to take is like, speak up and say what you want. And um, you have to work on releasing that fear of losing someone. This is not easy to do. And this is even like saying this out loud, it kind of makes me feel something because this is essentially why anyone holds back, hold themselves back when they really love and care about someone. The reason you're probably here even watching this is because you've had a fear in some way that expressing yourself or asking for more or amping this up somehow would result in losing this person. So this is something you have to work on. We all probably have to work on this, but it is that feeling that if you lose this person, it's going to be okay. Um, we see strength. We see that you have faith. You have ways of navigating loss. You know how to deal with trauma and loss. Your heart works. It's not going to shut down. And then we have surrender over here. And this is like getting much more to like a higher level I guess in your chakra, this would be like your, um, um, oh my God, what's it? Your crown. And this is more of like a whitish light. And, um, this is more like spiritual, right? And I do think you need to get to this surrendering place where you, I don't know, to me, this is like, you can surrender to anything. You can surrender to love. You can surrender to commitment. You can surrender to not ever being with this person. You can surrender to saying whatever you want. You can surrender. Like, this is just being okay. Like this is being okay. This is you in your headspace being absolutely fine and confident and accepting, like surrendering yourself to whatever the outcome is. It's going to be fine. Um, and that I don't want this to like make you think that this isn't going to go where you want it to go. That's not at all. That's not, this isn't what spirit is saying. This is her message to you is like, these are the, the, like the, I say chakras, but these are the energies or the like points in your personality or something that you need to really work on. And personality isn't the right word. This is like your own inner personality, your own. Anyway, this is you. These are the things you need to work on to just to enjoy the phases that are going to come with this change because you are going to change something. If you follow this guide, you're going to shake things up and it's something's going to change. Um, but you will know that you at least expressed yourself in it. You gave it your all. You said what you needed to say. And now you can deal with whatever it is. And it might be really beautiful. Like there's nothing here to make me think it couldn't be beautiful. This is just a like something there's, there's a fear here. And you know, even when we, when we look at strength, 
I feel like, like I said, like you're being strong for you. Like you were keeping things kind of in a certain place because you do have the self-control to do that. And it, it does, it takes, it takes strength, right? To not, uh, I'm trying to think of like how I can express this without rambling, but anyway, you are strong. Um, and I just, I think think this could be a very bold and exciting thing, but yeah, if you want to do this, if you want a commitment from them, this is what you have to do and you have to, um, yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry. I'll stop rambling about this. Um, anyway, please like subscribe, comment, whatever you can do. I just really hope you enjoyed this reading and thank you so much. I hope to see you again. Goodbye. Hi, this is Light and Bone Tarot. Thank you so much for being here and for letting me read for you. Um, a great reading today. We are, you are here because you picked Azurite, um, green and blue, and just very like clean and cleansing looking in a way. It just reminds me of like the earth, like um, an earth picture. Okay. Um, okay, so this reading's been, I've never done this a reading like this before, but it's about the actions you need to take to get this person to commit to you. And um, I said, started both readings by saying like, you know, this is supposed to be fun. I don't want to tell you what you have to do. I'm not telling you anything. I don't want spirit to make you think that you're doing everything wrong. This is just a fun guide to, if you want them to commit, this is her guidance to what it would take to kind of shake things up a little. So um, let's have fun with it. Okay, so this is you now. And I'm going to pull the energy you need to be at, the, like the place you need to be at um, to get this person to commit. So we have two different kind of energies here. So we've got, we've got growth plants and we've got home earth. Okay. So the plants, you know, this is, I, I really, really, I love this card because the plants are like, Okay, so they are. They're growth. They're they're they they not only take nourishment, they give nourishment. They create life. They release oxygen. They they're essential, and they they just feed life, right? So for me, when I see this plant card, and if this is you right now in the relationship, I think like, and and growth is what we're giving to this. I do think you've been kind of feeding this relationship, and we have to find something wrong with what you're doing now because it's, it's, you need to stop what you're doing and you need to go to this other energy. So I'm going to say that like, you've almost been nourishing this current situation a little bit too much. You haven't really killed it, right? You haven't given this person any reason to think that like you would all of a sudden stop providing this, this life, right? Like you, so this, this dynamic you guys have exists because you've just, you've fed it, you've nurtured it. You've probably given it a lot of yourself. Um, you've probably kind of almost cared for this person in one way or another. Maybe you've like actually cared for them. Maybe they were sick. Maybe you just accommodate them so much, but that's what I see when I get the plants and growth that you've just been very, very nurturing and accommodating. And you've like almost like, maybe you've seen this person through something, but really have they done that for you in return? Uh, you know, are they your plant? Are they your life source? Um, not really, or else you, you probably wouldn't be here if they were. Um, and then, and this is a very similar card. So this is very, I, I like this. So what spirit is saying you need to B, okay, like this is what you need to embody. This is earth and this is home. So earth is like, it's like the bigger version of the plant, right? And I, what I get about earth is like earth will do, it's, let's just say it's like mother nature. It's, it's the home base. You almost need to make this person come to you. Like you are with earth. I think of all the crazy stuff that goes with it, the good, the bad, you know, the tsunamis, the droughts, the floods, the crazy weather, but then all the beautiful stuff too, right? And I think what I'm getting is that instead of just being this, this source of nourishment and life and energy for this person, instead of feeding them, you need to kind of make them you need to make them appreciate you a little bit more. You need to make them see you as like 
they need to be with you. They want to exist on this, this beautiful planet that is you, right? They want to just embrace you. And I, it's, it, these, these, these energies are similar, but if I read them this way, it's like pull them into you. And I don't know, there's a bigger picture here. Like, it's like almost like take what you're doing now and amplify it. Like, but not, but you don't really want to amplify it because if you did, you'd be giving them everything. I just think you need to be willing to create, but then we have the word home here. I'm really thinking about this. I'm sorry. I'm like slightly perplexed because I get this. And then for this, I'm like, what is the message here? Like, what is the real message is spirit trying to say that you need to do in this like home earth card? And maybe it's like a different kind of nourishment. Maybe it's like a big picture nourishment. Okay, so you've helped them grow, okay? Whatever that is, maybe you've helped them grow professionally, spiritually, um, emotionally. You've helped them, okay? We've established that. And now you may need to make them come home to you, okay? You need to make them see you as like, their source of fuel. Okay. They, they need, they need to come home to you. And I, I, this is, I don't know how else to read this. Like this is something instead of you giving, they now need to come to you. And I, oh God, I'm sorry. That is a weird, we're going to get, we're going to get better with this. Okay. So if you're still with me, um, we're going to do some tarot about who you are up here. And then we're going to get more to this and this will get clearer. Pictures always get clearer. Um, okay. So this is you, we've got 10 of cups, which is great. And the hermit. So in your connection right now with this person, um, I, <laughs> When I see the hermit, it makes me think that you're, you are turned in. You're not, although you may be giving, I don't think you're asking a lot from this person. I think what you need, you're actually getting from yourself. I don't see you. This tells me you've been looking inward. You haven't been asking for anything. And this is a fine energy to be like overall, like it's, we all go into phases where we're more of like the hermit and that's fine. But I think in a relationship, if you get this hermit card, it means you're not, you're not really working with this person. It's not like this partnership. And again, it would be easy to give if you're the hermit, but the hermit, they look within, they are searching for something in themselves and that's a really weird dynamic if you're with someone and you're trying to grow with someone. And this tells me that that would kind of have to stop. You would have to start turning to this person. You would have to show them like, um, what you want and what you need. And it would have to be this like almost big picture because the hermit does, they want, they know what they want. Well, they may not know exactly what they want, but they know they want like peace or they want clarity or they want, you know, understanding knowledge. It's something like it's a big concept and they will search for it until they find it. Um, but you don't really look for it in someone else. And I don't think that's been the best thing. Like moving forward, we want you to step out of this hermit capacity with this person, um, which would mean share more, ask more. Um, it seems like you're giving quite a bit, but it would be this, this, this take, right? Um, and like come out of your shell, which is, you know, exactly the picture we're seeing, but yeah, don't like, it's a come out of your shell to me, um, because you've been maybe kind of locked up or cooped up quite a bit. Um, okay. So the 10 of cups is, is a really good card. And I like this card. This is a card of like all the culmination of the cups. It's love, it's romance, it's marriage, it's everything. But in the context of like what wasn't working, I'm almost going to say when I see this card that like in this dynamic, let's say you took all the things you wanted and you told yourself in a way, you know, I'm really happy. Even though I really want marriage or love, I'm really happy. Things are good. I'm, I'm okay in this dynamic. And I, that's kind of like a shitty thing for me to say or like a conclusion for me to draw, but I'm not sure what else to do with seeing the 10 of cups in this context, because obviously you're not getting the love or marriage. You're here because you want this person to commit. 
So I'm going to say that in almost like a phony baloney way, you have wanted these things and I'm not saying you want to jump like down the aisle with someone, but you've wanted more. You've wanted commitment at the very least, or you realize that now and you've just been, you haven't really spoken up about it. You might have, you might be getting very honest with yourself and real with yourself that you want this. I don't think you've talked to your partner about it. Um, or maybe you've talked to your friends about it. I just don't think you've expressed it to your partner. And I think you're in this like cycle with them where you just give, you nourish them, but you're not even telling them what you want from them. Right? Like, and so I do see this as this, like, you're pretty clear with the things you want. And again, it doesn't have to be marriage or anything like that. It's just what would make you happy? What would be your like subliminal feeling in a relationship? And yet you've kept it to yourself, um, as you continue to give to this person and help them and build them up and nourish them. Um, okay. So now when we get to this, like earth and you know, I'm just going to say with earth, like let's say it's pentacles and it's that earth, it's the security. Like there's a confidence, there's a a stability. There's just this, like this groundedness. And, but then earth also, it's a rock, like let them be their rock. Like let them see you as their rock. Okay. Like let them come home to you in a way. And I just, I don't, ugh, sorry, I don't know how else to explain it. I can see it, but I feel like as I try to explain it, it gets a little crazier. Um, okay. So we're going to get some tarot about what you would want to be with them like what changed, here's some actions you can do um, to make this happen. So we've got the six of wands, which is interesting. And we've got the lovers. Okay, so moving forward in this dynamic with, you know, what actions do you need to do? I, I like this. Okay, so this is generally a card of like recognition putting someone on a pedestal, but I really see this as you. I see this as like you putting yourself front and center, you being the one, you making yourself the center of the show, um, you putting yourself in a position where this person has to admire you. I don't think you've done that. I really don't. And when I, I go back, I'm, I told myself they wouldn't say the word nourish again, so I'm not going to. But what I get from this growth and this plants is like you've given this person, you've helped them grow. I don't see this as necessarily you've grown too much. Um, and I, not, I'm not saying you haven't grown because that's actually harsh. I wouldn't say that at all. I would say you've the theme has been what you've done for them. But now I want them to see you. I want them to acknowledge you. I want them to make the choice to be with you. And the lover's card also has a dual meaning. It has many meanings. Not only is it lovers, which is a great concept for this card. It's also a card of choice. It's a card of making decisions. It's everything from like the, I don't know, we wouldn't call it like the fatal decision of Adam and Eve, but everything from like that final decision to, um, to deciding intentionally who you want to be with, why, and what, what is the reaction here? Um, but this is very much like there, this is an intentional energy. This is making a choice. And I think for you, you, I really want you to figure out what you want and make that choice and go towards it. So if you, if your choice is that this is someone you want, you want to be with them, you want them to commit, you want to live together in a year, you want to be with them, you want them to commit, you want to hang out with them four nights a week, like whatever it is. And those are two like stereotypical examples, but whatever it is, you need to make that choice and you need to show them that you're really not budging. I, I just think this is a very clear message of like, I need this, I want this, and I'm going like, it's just not going to change. It is very much um, what I need and want. And the message here from Spirit is if you do this, they will they will kind of admire you for it. Not kind of, they will admire you for it. They'll recognize you for it. And they too, in turn, I think will make a choice. They will decide if you're the right 
person right now for them. And you very, very well may be, but you haven't asked for it. You've put so much energy into them. You haven't really spoken up about all the things that you want and feel. And it is now your time to get adorned. It's their need to come home to you. They need to start like nurturing and giving back to you, taking care of their sort of mother earth kind of thing. And I don't know, when I think of mother earth, I think of someone like it's protective. It's like (coughs) they need to see you that way of this, all the beauty and um, just protection and love that is you. And, um, yeah. And I think I get the lover's choice. Like you both need to make your choices and you both need to make these choices in the hope of it turning into like a relationship and, and things going well. Um, okay. This is, I'm going to do like a connector card. That's how, you know, like a little guide from spirit, um, what we can help you work on to connect these two. And the three of wands, um, comes up. And with this, we have, it's almost more of like a decision card. It's, it's foresight. Um, okay. I think when you make this choice, when you figure out what you want from this person, I really, I, this to me is like a message of make a calculated decision, right? Think on it. Don't be hasty. Really think what you want. Um, is it a game? Do you just want to see if you can get this person to commit? Is it, you know, what do you really want and why? And this is, to me, this is just a card of like solid contemplation. And I do think it will result in that action. I don't want you to sit on these thoughts forever. This is an action card. Um, this is a fire heated, a card of action and passion and doing what you want, but I want you to know what you're doing. So this isn't like going over to someone's house you know, having a drink and then getting drunk and telling them everything you want. This is like you really thinking and being very intentional because that will also give you confidence and it will make you just, it'll, it'll set you up to be like very respected in communicating this. And if you do this in a way that serves you and it's true to what you want, they're going to respect it. They're going to admire it. And that could turn into them to give, you know, wanting to be with you, wanting to commit and having it turn into this, like just this whole respect, like with the earth, like you respect your home, you respect the earth, you respect nature. I want them to just like respect you and need you in that way. Um, yeah. So, okay. And I've been doing these chakra cards and I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do like, um, the chakras you're in now, which I think are good. And I want, I think they're positive and I just want to like bring to your attention what you've been kind of embodying. Um, and so we've got confidence in the black, which is like not really a color. That's funny. And then we have isolation next to the hermit, which is very odd, but interesting. Um, okay. So I do think this isn't, the black isn't connected to a color. I don't know. I cannot remember if black is like all the colors or none of the colors. I think white's all the colors. So I don't know what black is. It might also be all the colors. Um, this isn't a card about being in balance or not, but I would say that you are truly working on your confidence. I would say if you haven't done this yet, it's probably because at the end of the day, you've lacked the confidence to do it. And that's fine. We all lack confidence. This is a big, big thing to do. This is totally putting yourself out there. But I think now, because you're asking this, because you're sitting here watching this reading, you are ready. You do have the confidence. And this isn't You've worked on your confidence. You've been working on this. You have it now. You're ready. Um, And isolation next to the hermit in this kind of gray off color, which is also not really much of a color, but like still closer to a whitish light. I would say, again, if you haven't done this yet, it's because it's just been easier for you not to. You are working on you've just been looking within. You've been on like, maybe you've been on a spiritual journey. Maybe you've been really working on you in ways where it's just been easier to give to this person because taking and asking for things has just quite frankly been too overwhelming. It's been too much. You, It's been so easy for you to like, I don't know. I just think you've been in a place of contemplation and meditation and it's been easy for you to give because I think you're probably someone who can give very easily and put other people's first. 
Um, and I just, and now you realize that's got to stop or not, not that it has to stop, but you realize you want more. Let's put it that way. And you're ready for more. That's what I think this is. You're coming out of your hermit. You're coming out of your isolation. You're no longer going to isolate your thoughts, your wants, your needs, all of that. Like you're ready. You have the confidence to do it. You know what you want. You've known what you want for a while, but now you really know you're really going to know you're really going to dial into what you want and you're going to express it. And you're going to do it with this, just this, this. I don't know, this extreme, like rock solid confidence. Like, I don't know, like this woman on the car, just this, I just think of mother earth. Like, I don't know. Um, and you're going to be admired for it. And I know that that's not like you want a commitment out of it, but I'm just saying, no matter what, you're not going to feel like shit for doing this. It's going to feel good no matter what. Um, okay. Now let's get the, um, let's get the, chakras you need to work on to make this happen and to do it. Okay. So we've got stop and we've got, um, caution. Okay. So I will say the stop came up before in the same exact place. And I do take this as, cause this is red and it's, it's like the root, um, it's your root chakra. And I do, I think of passion. I think of like, um, like being physical. I, I'm going to take this as a stop the physical message. I'm going to say, if you want this to work, this is a message from spirit to stop the passion, stop the physical, stop the like kind of carnal aspect or urges that are accompanying this dynamic and just lean into expressing what you want, you know, your words, your actions, whatever. But this is just a message to stop the physical. This is the only other reading. There've been two readings that have said, stop the physical. So it's not every reading. It's just this and one other. Um, okay. And caution is also a little bit of a word of warning. The yellow we're getting into, like, I think of the solar plexus. Um, I think of like your, your, your stomach. Um, I get your gut, like, go with your gut. Okay. And this isn't a warm and fuzzy, like chakras, but this tells me you need to really develop. You need to work on your root chakra. You need to take a step back from physical because that might be an overdeveloped part of you right now. Um, that you might want to just put the energy that you've been putting into like that part of you somewhere else. And then the caution is like, this is kind of feed your gut and, and listen to it and go with it. And that doesn't mean don't do this. That's not at all what it means. This we're here because we're saying, if you want to do this, this is, this is what, this is your formula. But there's something here about like developing that solar plexus chakra, which anyone here can like Google and learn about and what that would mean and, and how you want to listen to it and how you want to put more energy into that. Cause up here we were kind of like chakra free this was just like very strong messages about confidence and you like getting into like this kind of meditational isolation. But down here, this is your message from spirit of what you would want to work on to kind of really step into this energy. Um, but I just, as a final wrap up, I really think there is a lot here. And I, I think you can make this person see you as like a queen. This is kind of like a queen energy too. Like, yes, like be their queen. I like want to ascribe that on this card because that's what I get from this. Um, think about what you want and go for it and do it. Um, they will admire you. They will respect you. They could very well fall in love. They could very well commit. The lover's card is super positive, but it definitely tells me that both of you have a choice to make and you, this will probably lead to great conversation. This is a very, very positive message um, up here. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. I would love to hear your thoughts. Please like, subscribe, do whatever you can. And um, yeah, if, I mean, no one's ever shared their thoughts. Well, actually I take that back. I do have some close friends who share their thoughts, but um, please share your thoughts. And I am, um, thank you so much. Goodbye.